basically, you know, bought because of what's in their file. And my husband said, you know, nobody has a file on us. <laughs> That's what righteousness feels like. You know, there's no guilt, there's no shame, there's no condemnation. It feels like clean. The fear of the Lord is clean. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Somebody uh, who's a pastor when I was in Juno said um, find or explain righteousness as right standing with God. Right standing with God. That's a good way. Mm -hmm. Doing things right according yeah. to God's word. Yeah. Following the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Yeah. Studying the Torah. Learning what his word says. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, this is a That's little okay. bit of a deviation. That's all right. I always felt this when I was little. So I'm just going to leave it that there and not take it forward. But when someone thinks they're righteous, they think they're better than you. You think they're self righteous. Oh, yeah. That's self righteous. So, yeah. Yeah, the clarification for that yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, you've, you, first of all, what scriptures, if you think you're doing so wonderful that you don't have any problems, scripture <laughs> says that person is deceived, right? Because we all have stuff, okay? And so God's righteousness is, he gives, he shows us how to be righteous by following his way. If we are prideful, that's self-righteous. Okay? Would it be fair to say that's what Satan was? Self-righteous. Yeah, Satan was self-righteous. So yeah. Feel, yeah. So somebody that self-righteous feels superior. Yeah, arrogant. And then so then if you feel like you're righteous, but you're looking at someone who's not righteous, the correct feeling would be compassion, maybe? Or mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If it's annoying it's to you, forgiveness, you know, except they feel that way. Everybody gets to choose what they feel and what they say and what they do. We've got to get that down really clear so we can accept that you're choosing what you choose, I choose what I choose. Okay. And that that really frees you from, from demanding that other people walk the way you walk. No. Or whatever whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, the scripture says that arrogance is the very, uh, arrogance and superiority and pride are the very description of sin. And so we want to stay away from that. Yeah. Um, now, also, the enemy will twist what God says. God says to, um, to, to uh, not have, or God says have, have humility. But some people have twisted that to say, well, it's prideful to, to, uh, to like yourself. Even though the scripture says you are to realize that you're made in God's image and you are very good. And so Satan twists the definitions. Uh, you, you've probably seen definitions change in our own lifetime, right? Satan's very good at changing definitions. And so he will do that on us. Yes? Sorry, I just want to ask. Um, it's more like a little bit you said about the past that they were. Feel like there's um, multiple paths to walk for that, or is it just, just, just one definite one that you walk? A, multi, a path of what? Yeah, like a path that you walk. Oh, it is a path. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like it's multiple ones, or is it no. just one. that one, the set? I think that the answer to that, I think well, from what I'm, you're asking, is one. Is there multiple ways to get to God? Yeah. Or no. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is one way to get to God, and he makes it very, very clear in his scripture. He says, this is the way, walk in it. And it's said it's narrow, and you, um, you want to stay on the path. Yeah, it has, it has boundaries. It's, it's all about the, it's about the word, not a word. Not a way, but the word. They, the way, all right. The way. That would be a way to say it. Yeah, he has given us clear and clear instructions. He's the only God who gives clear instructions. All other gods make you wonder and hope, and, you know, and you won't know. And they, and they all say, all the other gods say you won't know until you die. <laughs> That's not what our God says. Our God says, for God has not, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. 
So right there we know fear is a spirit. Yeah. And we know how spirits come in. We say yes to them because we're a vessel, we're sealed. We open the door or close the door and we either permit or prohibit. So what are you permitting into you? And so we know fear is a spirit. And then he said what he did give us, power. Power of the Holy Spirit. Power and authority over, over spirits. We can say no. That doesn't mean that fear can't come and say, don't you want to be afraid? Because that's called a temptation. And there's no sin in temptation, right? Jesus was tempted for how many days? In the wilderness, right? So temptation is not the sin. When we say, yeah, I'll go, go come on in and I'll be afraid. I'll worry. Now, what would a person's motive be to worry? If we have a God who says, I didn't give you that spirit, just that spirit, and you don't, and you get to choose, I gave you power to say no to that spirit, why would we have fear? Yeah. So we need to look at that. He said, I gave you love. I gave you love. He said, I loved you first. Before you ever even loved me, I loved loving you. He, so I, we even know how to love, right? What, what is love? Remember, love is not a feeling. This is why he did said, don't take your feelings captive. He said, take your thoughts captive. Mm. And if you're keeping a record of wrongs against somebody, that's not love. All right? And then he said, I gave you a sound mind. What are the implications of a sound mind? Peace. Yeah. Discipline. Yeah. Discipline. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Because some translations actually say, I gave you, oh, yeah. I gave you self discipline. It doesn't say, I gave you the ability to discipline others. <laughs> right? It says, I gave you self discipline. I gave you a sound mind. So who has said, oh, I'm losing my mind? <laughs> oh, I'm getting old. I can't do what I. You know, th those are all called curses on your sound mind. I'm going crazy. Or I'm go yeah, or I'm going crazy. That's a that's a word curse. And what does he say about cur words? Mm -hmm. We eat the fruit of the words that we speak. So what are we saying? I'm gonna tell you what my vocabulary has changed completely in the last 15 years <laughs> since I came to Wellspring. Fear used to be a word I used all the time, and when I wasn't using the word fear, I knew it because I'd get highs. I don't get those anymore. Yeah, because fear is the basis of allergies. So if you're dealing with allergies, hallelujah, let's get rid of the fears. Yeah? Is that something you can pray about? Yes, ma'am. What's the fear? What? Okay, tell me what, what, when I said get rid of the fears, you want to pray there to get rid of the fears? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Let's start that process right now. And what I want you to do, we're going to start by just saying, Lord, forgive, forgive me for um, being open to fear. Yeah, yes, did you want to say something, Kristen? I've never had allergies my entire life. Okay. And I just got out of jail like three weeks ago, and all of a sudden I have allergies now. Okay. And I've been struggling with anxiety. Okay. Like physical anxiety. Well, there's a perfect example. So is this one yeah. happening? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm like, wait, I'm not allergic yeah. to dogs. I'm not allergic. I don't. So I don't know what's going on with these okay. allergies. What I want you to understand is that we have a gland in our brain that is responsible for the recipe for your hormones and your chemicals. You have 1,400 chemicals and 30 hormones. And that, uh, that recipe is, is damaged when you let Satan's spirits into you. It scrambles the recipe. And um, when we teach the kids this in our kids program, we have two recipes set out. We have two 
stations where there's ingredients and one is a scrambled recipe. <laughs> and our cookies turn out bad. <laughs> and the other recipe turns out good. Why? Because the recipe God designed you to have is the right recipe. And you can scramble your own recipe and it, you, it'll manifest in your body. Because as your spirit, it says in first, or third John, as your soul has a good journey, your body has a good journey. And that good journey means as, you, as your soul follows God, your body follows God. And remember, God's design is that you're healthy. He wants you healed. He wants you healthy. Why? It gives him glory. And we're, in, we're a nation under a spirit. You'll, we'll talk about it next week, but we're in a nation uh, under the pharmakia spirit. Yeah. So, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. I gave you power, love, and a sound mind. Let's pray. Father God, I confess. I have been open to the spirit of fear. I ask you to forgive me. I repent. I am no longer willing to be open to the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus and by the power of his blood, I cancel Satan's power in this issue. Holy Spirit, heal my heart. Strengthen my discernment. Renew my mind. Tell me the truth about this. Anyone want to share? May I lead you in a little PS on that prayer? Mm -hmm. Father, Father. What's my motive for accepting fear? Anyone want to share? I think it's going to be anticipation of pain. Anticipation of pain. Okay. Okay. So may I lead you in a prayer to repent for the fear of pain? Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I confess, repent, and renounce the fear of pain. I know fear is not from your kingdom. I release myself from the fear of pain. In the name of Jesus and by the power of his blood, the fear of pain must go. Holy Spirit, Heal my heart. Renew my mind. And tell me the truth about this.
anyone want to share? Okay, well, we'll go on. Isaiah says, don't be anxious. And First Peter says, give your load of anxiety to God. And in I in Isaiah and another place it says the fear of the Lord fear of the Lord only he will be your sanctuary. Now what is a sanctuary? A safe place, right? It'll be a safe place. So if we're in our sanctuary by having that relationship and understanding who our God is, we're not going to be fearful. We're going to choose to trust him instead. So here's God's answer to fear. 1 John 4.18 says, There's no fear in love, but perfect fear casts out. Perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. And he that fears is not made perfect in love. All right. Well, who likes torment? None of us, right? I brought my little thing I want to share because this scripture was occulted you'll learn about the occult next week but it was occulted in a chinese food restaurant and they have things called fortune cookies right and so they take little sayings and they take a little clip and it's uh, they took out um perfect love casts out fear they took it out of the scripture and they put it in their cookie and Janice got it for dinner one night when she was about 30-something. 30 30s. And um, I was in love with my husband, Robert, at the time. So I put the little thing here next to his picture. This is, when, this is 40 years ago, so you probably don't recognize him. <laughs> but I kept this because it is as an example. I, in my head, thought that if I married this man, he was going to have perfect love, and he's going to cast out all my fears. Well, guess what happened? <laughs> marriage changed. Yeah, God had to resurrect our marriage because I did not understand that it's the perfect love of Jesus right. that casts out fear. Mm -hmm. Men don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So wherever there's Jesus, there can't be fear. So we have to look at what are we carrying because we're, and not rely on a person to save us? People can't save us. And, but God can save us from torment. Is that a good, is that a good idea? <laughs> is that a great promise? Yeah. All right. So if it's, not, um, if it's not faith, it's a sin. Faith is the opposite of fear. All right? So they cannot be in the same place. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's evidence of things not seen. Now, that means you can't wait until you see something to have faith. Because if you already have it, you don't need faith. And it's faith that pleases God. I like the definition that says to be sure of things not seen and certain of things to come. So are you sure about God? Are you sure that his perfect love casts out fear? If you're not sure, you can go to the scripture and choose to believe it. That's all you have to do. Choose. Choose this day whom you will serve. And how do you know whom you are serving? Because the scripture says you're either a slave to good or you're a slave to bad. And if you're serving Satan, you're a slave to bad. And if you're serving God, you're a slave to good. Of course, you're a bond servant. And Galatians 1, 10 says you cannot be a good bond servant if you have a fear of man and want, trying to get men to approve you. So if we take all that energy worrying about what other people are thinking about us and put all that energy into what does God say? It's a direct line to that path that is righteousness, peace, and joy through the Holy Spirit. That's how you get it. So 
The things we fear the most happen. It's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're actually worshiping fear when you're paying attention to it. Because worship is paying all your attention to something. And whatever you're looking at is where you're going. That's why it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Sorry, the scripture does say that too. I don't know where it is, but it's in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. this one, the things I fear the most. Yeah. That, that which you fear will come upon you. Yeah, yeah. That's why God says, don't fear. I love what Wyland says that when you rise a motorcycle, that if he looks to the right, his motorcycle goes to the right. Yeah. That whatever direction we're looking. Yeah. If you want to be a skier in the woods, don't look at the tree. <laughs> Look at the path you want to go on. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You go where you're looking. Yeah. And we're actually de designed by God to be totally enthralled with something. That's why we get addictions. Because we're designed to be so enamored with our God, so sold out, if you will, to our God, that that's all we really care about. And if we don't do that, we're going to get addicted to shopping or sex or drugs or all kinds of stuff because we're designed that way. And God said, put me there because there's a hole in us that can only be filled by God. Amen. He's the only one. Yeah. And fear says, it's all about me. They're going to get me. And that's kind of the opposite of humility. <laughs> yeah. All right. So how does fear enter? Choice. The choice to do what? It says in Isaiah, it's the choice of what you see and what you hear. So when somebody comes in for a ministry and they're full of fear, one of the first things we say is, what you've been watching, what you've been reading. Mm -hmm. And then we go into repenting for watching horror movies and uh, repenting for watching the news and repenting for, you know, whatever it is that's bringing in the fear. But fear comes in through your eyes and your ears. And some people can watch the news and not become fearful. Some people can watch the news and they become fearful. It's up to you, depending on the spirit you're willing to take in. And if we do take it in, because occasionally we do, remember this is not a one-time shot and you're done, occasionally you'll notice you're starting to be a little nervous about something, and that's a hallelujah moment. Let's pray. Let's get rid of it. Because you find it so delicious to live in righteousness, peace, and joy. It's so opposite of how we live when we live in the world. I know I've been in both places. I've lived in the world, and it's a, it's a mean, scary, up and down, uh, chaotic place. Chew you up and spit you out. In fact, that's exactly the words my husband told me. He says, they're going to chew you up and spit you out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, what have we been watching? What have we been listening to? And... God said, here's the cool thing about God. It's in Philippians 4, um, 8. He said, if, there's, if it's a good report, think on that. Does that mean he wants you to be an ostrich and pretend that other stuff isn't around? No. He wants you to have, what's the word? Self-control. He wants you to have so much of his spirit in you that you have self-control and you only think of the things of good report. Mm -hmm. Then you are righteous. That's what righteousness feels like. It feels like doing it God's way. Yeah. So that's in from Isaiah 33, 15. Comes in through our ears and eyes. So what are the results? Anxiety and stress disorders. You all know by now, if you've been here even a couple of times, that the American Medical Association, which has nothing to do with the Bible, says that over 90% of all illnesses are thought-based. That's what we're talking here every night. What are your thoughts? Are you taking your thoughts captive? Are you saying no? 
Is your trash can full at the end of the day with thoughts that the enemy tried to get in and you threw them away and you said, nope, I'm not going to put up with them? Because that's the work. Remember, faith without works is dead. That's the work. Saying no to those thoughts. That's why God said take every thought captive. All right, what else does it do? It causes excessive adrenaline and cortisol. When I first found this book, Biblical Foundations of Freedom, and I took it to my mom, she had so much adrenaline and cortisol in her that she had rheumatoid arthritis. She was free of it in three months. And we never once prayed about her body. We only prayed about her heart. We only prayed about bitterness, self-bitterness, jealousy and envy, rejection, fear, co-practices, and unbelief. We never once said, oh God, heal her body. Because as your soul has a good journey, your body has a good journey. And you can heal yourself Amen. using the power of the Holy Amen. Spirit by walking, his, walking in his kingdom. The more minutes you spend walking in his kingdom, the more peace you have, that's where the healing occurs. Amen. That's where the healing occurs. That's the atmosphere of healing. It's in that place. And fear suppresses, weakens your immune system. You will get sick quicker when you are choosing fear, just like you will get sick quicker if you are bitter. Yeah, it has a direct effect and suppresses the immune system. Yeah. So living in the red zone is what we call it, and it looks like this. God wants us to live here in peace. He wants us to have homeostasis. Homeostasis is the medical word. That means everything's copacetic. <laughs> I remember that from college. I don't know why that came out. <laughs> That's another word for shalom. Is that just yes, another? <laughs> Thank you. All right. So it's another word for uh, for peace. The peace that passes understanding. Notice that it's. Another word for forgiveness. <laughs> it requires forgiveness to live there. And then something happens and you get a quick shot. Adrenaline is that quick stuff that goes in there. All right, now here's the problem with this. We have something called the general adaptative system in your body. What does that mean? It means you get used to stuff and you hardly notice it anymore. If I had a lemon here and I cut it and I put it uh, and I put a blindfold on you, John, and I said, here, put this lemon under your nose and when I take it away, you tell me. In less than a minute, you'll tell me that I took the lemon away, but I didn't. Why did he say it? I did. Because he adapted. His nose adapts. All of your systems adapt. We don't want to be adapting to three, four, and five, and six, and seven. We don't want to start thinking that's normal, but that's what happens. You stop following God, and you start thinking this is normal. You start thinking, well, it's normal to be stressed. In whose world? Mm -hmm. In Satan's world, but how about God's world? And what does the scripture say? Be in the world, but don't be of the world. Do it differently. We're supposed, to be, we're supposed to look different than the world. We're supposed to act different. We're supposed to talk different. We're supposed to have a different outlook. And then you go up to cortisol. Cortisol is that slow junk that inflames. So if you've got a bunch of inflammation, you've got a bunch of cortisol in your body. And, of course, you can go right up to exhaustion and disease. So the goal is to live in the, in, in the peace. Shalom. Make it your normal. Yeah. Here is some really cool pictures from Dr. Caroline Leaf. She is a neuroscientist who studies the brain. And we get a lot of information from her because she happens to also be a Christian. And she loves pointing out how science shows that the brain is a certain way. All right, and this is a picture of the dendrites in your brain, and she calls them magic trees. And you can have flourishing magic trees in your brain, or you can have scrawny little ugly trees in your brain, your dendrites. 
It all depends on how much stuff you're carrying, how much cortisol you have, how much it's adrenaline that doesn't belong there. How much have you been scrambling your recipe? How much have you been walking in the kingdom or how much have you been out of the kingdom? Because that will determine the health of those dendrites. Look at this picture. This is like a foggy hole. Have you ever said I've got a fog on the brain? Just not thinking straight? That's what happens. You do. You get it. But Here's the good news. You get it from fear. You do not get it from faith, but you can change it. This is part of how you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You are designed by God to heal. And if you will stop fearful thoughts, that hole will fill in. That hole will grow back. That hole will be restored. It will be redeemed. It will be bought back. Yeah, that's why we do the Kinsman Redeemer chapter. <laughs> we have a Redeemer, and our Redeemer lives. Yeah, so why are faith and fear equal? Because faith and fear are, cannot be in the same place. One replaces the other. Let me do a quick demo, pretend demo. I've got a picture here, and there's, there's only what in it now? Air. There's only air in this picture. Now I'm going to pour some water into the pitcher. What has to come out of the pitcher in order for the water to go in? Air. Air. You mean they can't be in the same place at the same time? Right. They cannot be in the same place at the same time. So it's just like faith and fear. If we pour some fear in, the faith is gone. So we want to fill our pitcher <clears throat> Till it's overflowing. We don't want to just have it full. Why? Because then it's not going to get over on anybody else. <laughs> okay? We want to fill our pitcher to overflowing so it gets on everybody else. So that we have an effect on the kingdom to draw people to the truth because the truth sets us free. So we ask God, fill us, fill us till we're overflowing. He says, in Psalms, what, 23, my cup runneth over, right? He wants our cup to run over. He wants us to have so much faith, there's no room for fear. Fear can come knocking, but we say, sorry, no room in the end. Yeah. All right, so the question is, what are you focusing on? Notice, I cannot look at this hand and this hand at the same time. I cannot look at fear and faith. At the same time, I cannot look at the enemy and Jesus at the same time. I have to do this. So what's my focus? I'm going to keep my focus here. And you can be determined. You can make a pre, you can, you can set your mind. Romans 8, 5 says, set your mind on the things of the Spirit. So you can decide, and Dr. Caroline Leaf says, a mindset it, she calls it a mindset. She says it's a decision you make ahead of time with an attitude. <laughs> okay? So that means I am determined. I am going to not, I am going to say no to fear. I am not going to let that devil have his way with me any longer. That is mindset. Okay? All right. So what are you trusting? Okay? Here's how I learned to trust God. He said in his word, he is trustworthy. It says, trust God. He is trustworthy. So I chose to believe the word. And that's how you get it. You choose it. And then you make your decisions based on that. Because if you do the uh, Corinthians 131, which says, do everything for the glory of God. Saying no to fear gives glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. So fears. They've got a bunch of torment in them. This is a very short um, list of fears. But um, very real. Fears are real, you know. Yeah. I think it's an interesting thing to note. Dr. Caroline Leaf has shown the science that there's only two kinds of thoughts. There's fear-based thoughts 
and there are, she calls them, she doesn't call them fear, she calls them toxic and love. Okay? Toxic and love. Same as fear and faith. Jesus, Dr. Jesus calls them fear and faith. She calls them toxic and love. Uh, Dr. Jensen, who is a uh, educational specialist on how to use the brain to teach children, he calls them joy and fear. Okay, so there's, there's continuity in the science. There's only two kinds of fear. I mean, two kinds of thoughts. God thoughts, not God thoughts. Yeah. Uh, so I would like to pray. Anybody want to pray? Anyone want to say hallelujah? hallelujah? Yeah. Because if we don't, we'll walk out of here the same as when we came. But if we pray, you can walk out completely different. You can start your new God's normal in your life. Well, you want to taste and see that the Lord is good. You want to enjoy the freedom of having, of saying no to fear. Because God will just give you a bunch of reasons why you need to be fearful. And you've got one reason why you're not going to be. God said no. Yeah. All right. So think of the fear. It can be one of these. Or it can be one that you have. By the way, there is a list of about four pages in the Biblical Foundations of Freedom book. And that uh, is not an inclusive list. You can add all kinds of them. Anybody afraid of COVID? You can pray to get rid of that. Okay? Um, anybody, you know, fear of the rumors, fear of the future, fear of all kinds of stuff. We can get rid of those fears because of the God we serve. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I confess and repent I confess and come out of agreement with the fear of and you put your fear in that place. I ask you to forgive me for choosing this fear. I thank you that I am forgiven. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I release myself from this fear. In the name of Jesus and by the power of his blood, this fear must go. Holy Spirit, I ask you to heal my heart of this fear. Renew my mind. Tell me the truth that sets me free. Would someone like to share? righteous be shaken. <clears throat> Anyone else? If I am for you, who can be against you? Yeah. <coughs> if I am for you, who can be against you? That's right. That's right. Does anyone have a specific fear they would like to pray about that we haven't covered or you want to leave in this room before you, <laughs> you don't want to carry it home with you tonight? There's something, I don't know if it really relates, I mean it relates, but um, it's been kind of a difficult situation because 
First of all, I have two adopted daughters, and they, neither of them serve the Lord right now, as far as I'm aware of. Uh -huh. And one has quite a few medical issues, and the other one, I don't even know where she is. I can't get a hold of her for like a month. Uh -huh. I saw it a month ago, and I don't even think my other daughter has. But So that is something that I have to keep telling myself not to have okay. fear about. Yeah. Or worry about that. Okay. Whatever is going on, yeah. God's got it. Right? Okay. Well, let's pray that because um, a lot of us in here have children. A lot of us have children that are not following the Lord yet. 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 Yes. Yeah. A lot of us have, are, I haven't talked to our children. Yeah. So let's pray. Okay. Father God, I confess to you in the name of Jesus. I am worrying about my children. I am worrying about my children. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. I repent. I know worry is not from your kingdom. I know that worry is not from your kingdom. I release myself from worrying about my children. I release myself because I choose to trust you. In the name of Jesus and by the power of his blood, I cancel Satan's power over this fear. Fear for my children must leave me now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, fill the place where the fear used to be. Renew my mind. Tell me the truth about this. Yes. Okay, so I thought of the verse before we did the prayer that will bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Say it again. Bear one another's bear burdens. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6 2. Okay. Bear them to Jesus. And bear you one another, so. Yeah. And I think about it, like bear her burden. Okay. Pray. You just, you just pray. Okay, <clears throat> so you pray for her children. You pray that the Lord will bless them with the truth and the truth will bring them back to, to the Lord. And Father, we, we intercede for all of our children. We're praying for our children. We know, Father, that generations are your idea, that you desire our children, that you watch over our children to the thousandth generation. We, uh, that um, the children of the righteous never uh, beg bread. Thank you, Father. Thank you for my children. Thank you that you love them more than I love them. Thank you that you are a faithful God. Call them to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I think I wouldn't um, be concerned if I could know that she's alive. You know? Okay. That's but, the thing yeah. that my mind has to struggle with. Yeah. And what's, but what, go back to, there's no place in scripture that says, do not fear unless you wonder if they're alive. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's God. Right, I know. Okay. Know. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. What are you yeah. supposed to do about it? You say no. It's, remember, you're in a spiritual battle. And worry, what, what is, what you have to realize is that there is nothing about worrying that's going to help anything. It's only going to hurt you. And that you, we need wisdom. When, our, when we're dealing with our children, we need wisdom. And we cannot have wisdom when we are fearful. We make all kinds of decisions based in fear that will produce bad fruit. And we need to get rid of that fear so that we are um, saying no to when the enemy says, don't you have a right to be fearful. No, you don't have a right to be fearful. As followers of, of Jesus, we have no right to be fearful. Just like as followers, we have no right to be bitter. And 
no right to feel rejected. So we have to remember there's rights and there's responsibilities. We have rights and we can demand our rights, but along with rights are responsibilities. It's kind of like the guy who's driving, who's flying, or a woman who's flying an airplane. They're the sing, a single person in an airplane. They're up in the air and they're out in the bush and there's a runway down there. Well, they have a right to land on that runway. However, they have responsibilities. And if they get too far off to one side of that runway, they better get back. And if they get too far to the other side, they better get back. And that's part of what we're doing here. We, the, the runway is the kingdom of God. And if we get off to one side, our responsibility is get back in the kingdom. That's where all your good decisions are made. Your, 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 your wise decisions are in the kingdom. Okay? I guess my underlying question is, yeah. as a mother, when do you report a child missing? If you don't How old are they? 23. You don't. You don't. You can just do let them no, go No, but there. you know so what? Here. Yes. And you know what we'll do? And Especially we'll do it here after time. class with you. Um, I would suggest, if you would like to, that you do, uh, you break a soul tie with your adult children. Yeah. A soul tie is, a, is ha when your thoughts, emotions, and choices are going up and down with your kids. So choices. I'm not responsible for reporting her missing if I'm the only one that knows she might be missing? You could do a wellness check. You can check. do it if you wish. You can choose to. I wouldn't because they're adults. Yeah. I and uh, but you can that. I'm not saying don't do it yeah. I'm saying that that um, soul ties I'm suggesting that if you're tormented you want to break the soul tie well, sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not you know because she's been known to do this stuff but well, okay after a month or so and no one seems to have heard anything you wonder that's yeah. all is she alive? Is she well? Is she okay? Is she not? No, and I don't want to come across as any as not understanding. I actually have a son who did that to us for about seven years. We had absolutely no idea whether he was alive or dead. Yeah, and so I I totally understand, but I also understand the difference between living in the kingdom of God and living in the world. And there's a way of handling that stuff that God says that is so different than what the world says, because the world will tell you you have a right to be worried. So you have to choose, choose which one you're going to do. Yeah. Um, I, uh, if, I invite you all to stay and pray if you have a fear or something else you want to get uh, taken care of before you leave. Um, and I want to just end with this. This is an introduction to next week's lesson. Uh, next week's lesson is the occult. And this is a great example of how to be fearless. Okay? This little flyer, this little newspaper article says, Exercise, eat right, uh, talk openly, enjoy what you do, and appreciate life. And you're going to be fearless. Okay? Good example of occult. In the cult practice, especially after what we learned tonight, right? Way over fear, fear less is to be more faithful. Yeah. Yeah. Did that say eat right? Is what? Did that say eat right? Is that yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of like you can't drug spirits while well, you can't run them out by eating either. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll close this in prayer. Love, Father God, we love being together in your presence. Yes. We love your powerful and active presence. We love the way you knit us together as, uh, as your children into a family. Father, we thank you for your word that is established in heaven forever. And we thank you, Father, that you give us great purpose to establish your word on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, as we taught on fear tonight, I pray that each one of us will take the time to get rid of every spirit of fear that we are dealing with. For we know that your way is higher than our way. 
and we choose your way. Father, we thank you that your spirit seals the work that's been done in hearts here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. Come next week. We're going to be doing the occult. And it is an amazing chapter. Did you say three hormones or 30 hormones? 30. Yeah, 14.